Hey everyone, I'm Chris Rosen from Entertainment Weekly. Uh, you just watched Nobodies. We're going to bring out the cast and the crew now. Uh, first up, Larry Dorf. <laughs> Thanks, Larry, on the show. And then we have Hugh Davidson. Who plays you. Uh, Rachel Ramrods, who plays Rachel. Showrunner Mike McDonald, who will appear in later episodes. Uh, ben Falcone, executive producer, and Ben Falcone on the show. And uh, Melissa McCarthy, executive producer, and Melissa McCarthy. So we just watched that. It's just a very funny show. Uh, I, we watched it. Basically, you guys were pitching uh, Ben and Melissa on a show uh, or a movie. So what was the pitch process for the show about pitching them like, I guess? So we could start with, like, you, Larry, and Rachel, maybe, on that. Well, we, um, the three of us, um, have written together for a long time. And we were uh, writing on a kid's cartoon that... Uh, that wasn't the question. What was the question? I mean, like, how is it like the real pitch compared to like what we saw, I guess? Oh. I'm a, ro I'm a, ro I'm a robot. I'm going to, uh, to answer uh, four. Uh, You're just excited to hold a microphone. <laughs> That's all you really wanted to do. And you got nothing to say. This is really it. <laughs> this is really it. We just, just have to the turn cameras. the cameras on. That's it. <laughs> have you ever filmed a fish aquarium? <laughs> we just uh, wanted to do the pose. <laughs> do we need to repeat the question? I, I, mean, I mean, it's fine. I don't need to repeat it. It's a good story. Well, I guess, was yeah, what was the story? Two, two ish years ago, they came to me and they said uh, very formally, uh, Ben. We think we need to have lunch. And I said, okay, well, Which have we've lunch. known them for 20 years, so like, saying it formally was super yeah, it's weird. Very weird. Like, we'd like, like let's just go get lunch. Off, but it was, it was very, and there were like follow up emails, all from Larry. Um, <laughs> and they, they pitched me Mr. First Lady, the thing that you just saw, the, as a movie for Melissa to be in, and because Melissa was out of town. And um, I said, well, this is a good idea. It's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> Not according to the electorate. <laughs> Just reporting the news, <laughs> uh, So they, I said, uh, you know, no. Uh, and then um, uh, we also didn't have a script. We were too lazy to write a script, so we just thought we'd have an idea and go try to get Melissa in it, and people would give us a million. And then when Ben said no, we thought we don't need that. <laughs> We'll go pitch it without them. We're good enough. And then, um, That's not what we thought. <laughs> and then we did try and pitch the movie without Melissa attached, without a script, and, uh, and it was no one cared, and it was very embarrassing. We thought, well, maybe this is funny. So then they came, then they, uh, about six months later, they say, Ben, we feel that we need to have a lunch. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you fuckers, let's do it. And, um, uh, this time they pitched me basically the show of uh, Nobody's, and I thought it was really funny, and I told Melissa the idea, and she thought it was really funny, and then we were lucky enough to get this uh, man involved with uh, all of the episodes, so uh, that's basically how, how it went. Yeah. The, I think the, one of the things I really loved about it, I was just talking Did I answer you. your question? Yeah, you did. Great job. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> um, the, I really think, like, just watching again, I watched these two episodes before, but, like, man, the pacing is so good, and, like, it's just so... The, it's just such, like you're really cringing at some of the, it's just incredibly good. So I guess for, for Ben and Michael as directors of these, like how do you pace out what I'm imagining is a very kind of like improvised set as we're watching right now on this panel, like how do you make sure it's like hitting all these beats that are really kind of impressively funny? Uh, I, you know, I had a good editor for the pilot and he put together a really good version of it. He had a good feeling of how it was. And then Mike has two great editors and I mean, what, how do you pay? I mean, I don't know. I, I just, if there's a really funny part, I let it play and then I cut away from it. Oh. <laughs> I think honestly, you, in order to have good improvised moments and they're all amazing improvisers as are these two who are regulars in the show, you'll see, uh, and many of our other friends, um, you have to have 
the script, you have to have the story spine, and then from there you can improvise. And we, I think, mostly would love more improvisational moments, but it's the limits of a, a network or not network. What is Tegan Rant? It's whatever. It's more important <laughs> streaming <laughs> than anything you've ever seen. Um, but no, within the time limits, you, you know, there you go. And what what I think makes it work the most is that there are relaxed and sort of um, anarchic moments that we're allowed to put into a show that your average network show can't put in. Yeah. And I, I, just to add to that, also everyone from here over, we have known each other and we have worked together for 19 or 20 years. We've, we've all performed on stage for a decade plus of our lives and there's a timing and a comfort from that and Hugh, Larry and Rachel, like you, I just think you see that chemistry, and there's a there's an innate thing to it that you can't kind of can't conjure. So watching those three together, to me, even though I've known them so well, is still like it just shows up on the screen. Yeah, the three of you are really great. I think also the way it seems like every scene, it's always a two against one, but you never are sure which two are going to be against the one. And I find that really funny. It's always against Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, have you ever played basketball before? Yes, uh, and that's not far off from how I. No, do. that's actually it's exactly very real. <laughs> like most very small Jews, yes. <laughs> but for some reason, he, I mean, no one once you're past like 25, which wants we're all to well get past. injured playing basketball with friends. And this idiot plays defense, oh, and he doesn't defense. know any of the rules. And he, I quit. I couldn't play. <laughs> then we all retired. I had a great day one day, and I said, that's it, I'm retiring. <laughs> that was a year ago. True story. Yeah, we used to play every weekend at Ben's house. And you ruined it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so in that scene, you have Jason Bateman playing himself. Obviously, you guys are all happy. Like, there's a lot of people in the show playing themselves. When you're writing, like, heightened versions of famous people or your friends, how do you, like, keep that? What, what, is there a line that you're trying not to cross? Or, like, how do you just, like, present to them, like, what's going to happen? I think most people, I mean, you know, and I'll let these guys speak for themselves, but I think most people want to play, like, a really fun version rather than just come in and, you know, not do much, right? Yeah, for Kristen Wiig's part, you guys, you'll just hate Larry, and you'll just <laughs> annihilate Larry, which is very <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we tell everyone. You get to come in and, and just say horrible things to Larry, and they're like, yes. <laughs> but what's great about this robot is he doesn't care. <laughs> I he wasn't listening to any of that. I was just uh, waiting. Just yeah. No, but Ben and check. Melissa also play horrific versions of themselves. <laughs> yeah. I get much yeah. more. Otherwise worse. known as versions of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so much fun. I mean, we. Ben and I are both in it, so is Michael. Michael plays the group's therapist. Um, and it's just a, a nightmare to behold on, on uh, screen. But it's so fun to come in and just play the monster version of yourselves. And you, you really, it's so, it's like cringe-inducing. We would say things, I think all of us, and we were just like, oh my god. <laughs> like, can we really get away with that? <laughs> Do you have, uh, so uh, for, for, um, Larry, Rachel, and, and you, you guys, uh, when did you, I guess, did you ever have a realization that, oh wow, all our, like, our friends are incredibly famous? Was there ever a moment where you're like, oh, this thing kind of changed where we're not, we're friends still, but like, these people are like, now s incredibly famous? Well, you, you're nodding, but Rachel, what do you, what do you think? And then... I don't know what you're saying, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Oscars where Melissa was nominated, Kristen Wiig and Annie Mumola were nominated, Jim Rash and Nat Paxton won, Octavia was there, uh, Tate Taylor was there, and we were all Not on there. our couches <laughs> eating pizza. We were writing um, on a kid's show that we no one wanted to watch, including kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it was massively exciting. It was just bizarre. Like, I've always wondered what, like, who, like, Julia Roberts has a best friend, probably, who's, like, normal. Right? Or, or, um... or at least on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> but it, was, it was so fun. Like, we know these people. We've been backstage with them. We, we've, been, uh, we've been in their horrible apartments, and now they're famous, and we know them, and we're and like them, fun. but we're not like them. And it was just, um, yeah. seemed like fodder. 
Yeah. Do you guys, like, what, what is your first impressions of, like, when you guys all met? Do you guys, like, do you remember, like, most do you remember meeting them and, like, vice versa? Like, I know that's, like, 20 years a long time. I don't know if I'd remember meeting well, my friends, but sure. Melissa and I uh, met first. Right. We, they're, like, levels of the ground okay. level three. It's a big and, pyramid scheme. Yeah, it's a pyramid scheme, the ground links. Not and, unlike Scientology. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because you two got married. I wish you said, I don't remember meeting her at all. <laughs> Nothing. But in, but in um, advanced class, which is level four, that's where um, Melissa and I met Rachel, and Mike was our teacher. And Mike said terrible things to us all the time. All Called the time. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> they were truthful. Um, and then, then we ran into, ran into those bozos after. The, or when Mike was the most inspiring person, I would go every Thursday and watch him in the gas show. And which is an improv show in LA that the people in Austin may not know about. Oh, okay. Well, they're not children. <laughs> I, uh, well, if they were, they would know who you were. <laughs> I'm telling you, the kids didn't watch it either. <laughs> you were not number one with boys two to six then. You were not. That was aspirational. The long story short is we've all known each other for a very long time, and in a weird way, this is kind of a fantasy fulfilled, I think, for many people in the creative world, certainly me, where you get into the creative writing, acting, music, whatever it is, in your 20s, and you go, you meet people that excite you, and you say, someday we'll all work together, and we all did for free uh, in the theater for many years, and then, weirdly, 20 years later, we're all doing a TV show together, and having, making money, and ha making each other laugh, and uh, it's a crazy, yeah. weird, one-of-a-kind uh, opportunity. What you dream about when you're like, if I could go to work every day and do exactly what I love doing and do it with people that not only I like but I love and are in my small core of friends, it's like that's it's too good to even believe sometimes. And then Larry, <laughs> and also Larry, it's too easy. It's too easy. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's part of what makes it very relatable too, is because like, who wouldn't want to work with their friends, right? Like, I mean, like you just like your friends. Like, it'd be great to do, no matter whether it's a TV show or just like a, a company or whatever. It's like this is really cool to have that opportunity. Seems just incredibly fun. Was there? Is there? We, we mentioned a bunch of the cameos and, and people, guest stars coming up. Is there someone that we didn't see in these episodes that you were very super excited about people seeing when the show is on, and like what they did that maybe so was different? Many. There's so many. I mean, it's um, yeah. Murderers Row, amazing, funny, great actors. So, you know, there's Mike Bob, Hitchcock and Bob Odenkirk, Mike Hitchcock, Chris McCullough, the, so Kristen fun. Bell, Kristen Wiig, Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig, my, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's just Maya so Rudolph, many people came in full. Cheryl Hines. Yeah, Cheryl Hines. So. Michaela Watkins. Michaela Watkins. Steve Little, who Rachel Steve Harris. Little, who plays Craig, the <laughs> editor. It's, it's a, and then a bunch of people who you're going to all fall in love with, who you, you're like, who's that person? And they're amazing people we've all known who have not been given the right opportunity, who I think deliver in a huge way. Not big stars like Rachel, me, and Larry. <laughs> so, they're unknowns. And it's good that they get a break. So that the bigger stars, like Rachel, Hugh, and Larry, would have no one seen in their lives. But also we're aware that the world is in turmoil, and we should all think about big things. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, like, um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you guys, uh, I know the show is renewed for a second season already by TV Land. That's how, that's how <laughs> the TV Land is. It's very funny. And it's like, I mean, have you thought about, like, are you already thinking about, like, the second season? Not to jump super ahead, but, like, how much have you planned out the show? Ben, I mean, you look. Um, I, I've given, uh, <laughs> I'm just waiting because they like to, they're, uh, we call them LRH, Larry, Rachel, and Hugh, uh, because not, they're not L. Ron Hubbard. Not L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> um, but that was because in the scripts, we were too. I, I think it was so gross when, like, in the action line, you have to write the group or the gang, something. <laughs> and it was just like I couldn't bear to write our names. Any, then we just started writing LRH. But they're their own. So unit. we were lazy. And they are their own. They're. Th I guess they are three separate human beings, but they've been in this. Uh, amoebic, weird life force for together that they really do move and act 
and react as one person quite often, and it's quite a funny entity. Like if two of them are there and one's at a different appointment or something, if they do go alone and you ask them something, they're like, oh, Rachel's gone. So we have, we have to wait for Rachel to come back to answer the question. Like they really do. They're, they're this kind of wonderful, crazy, three-headed, wonderful monster, so but been, a monster. So we've been kind of waiting for this um, wonderful monster to kind of, you know, first they, first they ideate, is what they call right. it, and then they marinate, right? Yeah. Is that the because it rhymes? <laughs> it rhymes, and then they finally s to say, "Oh, we can." Then we stuff. satiate. <laughs> <laughs> that rhymes. But if anyone from TV Land is here, we, we've got a very clear plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you guys want? To, you, you, Larry and Rachel. What do you want to see in the future seasons for your characters? Or in season two. Opportunity. <laughs> uh, I've never done, done you got, this. You got before. tired. <laughs> I did get tired. Uh, well, it's what I actually day. love about the first season is uh, it's all the other characters that we developed. Meeting, for example, our therapist played by Michael McDonald, uh, my uh, ex-husband and his current husband, and my daughter and his. A uh, roommate and a love interest, Larry's family, um, and and so it's all these stories that we didn't necessarily set out to tell that I think have opened themselves up to tell um, a ton of stories. So I'm very excited. Yeah, the world, the world um, over just the course of the first season, the world got really interesting, uh -huh. and they they wrote these characters and these kind of conflicts in in real life situations that are both so weird and sometimes kind of bittersweet and compelling and often incredibly embarrassing on the part of those three. And uh, it's like by the, by the time we get to the end of the first season, you're really, there's, there's so many different little fractions of their world that you're kind of waiting to see what happens. I just and choked on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that one thing worth mentioning is that there are um, elements that are not comedic. There, it, the show, um, if you guys enjoyed what you saw, deepens a little bit, and um, everything isn't uh, just a laugh fest, and Rachel dies of cancer. Anyway. <laughs> no, but um, there, there are elements that I think you'll she like. Just it. Everything deepens, and um, that's all a result of their uh, excellent writing. Well, and you, you pushed us to do that, too. We were Yeah, you guys were sometimes. hard to get into the office. <laughs> we all that is true. Rachel had a, uh, a, a shoulder injury, and she had a uh, she had to go to the doctor, and um, so we all, we went, uh, Hugh and I went with Rachel. Because Rachel does not like to drive. I don't like to drive, it was all We all lined out in episode together. seven. <laughs> and the doctor couldn't figure out uh, why two men were in that. What is this weird polyamorous <laughs> relationship? <laughs> and we kind of used that uh, for Mike's uh, part uh, as Blaine Kane. Uh, our therapist. They don't know about. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't see that one. But uh, it's very, very, he's great. We set and, the uh, robot to tell and, stories and, that are inappropriate. But he can't figure it out. He's like, what is this? Uh, is this a sexual relationship? They're very weird. They are not, they're not a normal individual person, and then together they're even weirder. And that is why I'm getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of boss is Michael then for you guys, like as a showrunner? It's delightful. I, he scared <laughs> In this setting, <laughs> delightful. I, he definitely intimidated Larry. I know that. Well, because I knew him from the Groundlings. It's like which uh, is an uh, improv yeah, theater in, in L.A. In, in LA. Uh, which is You're not scene. children. <laughs> <laughs> but I was always intimidated, um, you know, because he was uh, uh, he was. Uh, I would see him in shows, and I was a fan before I met him. And, um, and he's smart. As I'm sure he's a huge fan. Uh, of <laughs> Well, one thing that Mike did, which I loved, was from the pilot, he asked two, he said he loved it, which is why he came on board, but he had two questions. He said, you know, I feel like Ben is smarter than, that he would, he would know you had a script. And so that was sort of the springboard to get us into the second episode. And that scene where you put it back in your purse. And he also, yeah, and he also suggested that Gavin catch us, he didn't want us to get away with the, um, Lie. The Melissa's in the back. And that sort of was the springboard for well, the... And also, oh, he's, we were going to have... No, go ahead and interrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. They'll come back around. It, gets, sure it starts good. Yeah, it, it, gets, it just keeps going. And it, it gets really going. good it's again. Okay. It's going to get good again, I promise. Just let we'll him say it. We'll do this all the way back down. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> just let him tell us. forget what I'm going to say. It's already too late. Uh, I bet it's too late. I would well, like to say something about Mr. Uh, Mike uh, McDonald. Melissa's talking. And, you, <laughs> and, then, and then I'll shut up and when it'll all come back on that side. But Michael came in to such kind of wonderful madness, but he had to juggle, like we block shot the entire episode. So at any given time, he's juggling not only three, three people that wrote it and are very passionate about it and people are coming in and out. He's juggling sometimes five, six different um, scripts at different time and you're doing the first episode and the ninth and then the seventh and back to the third. And in doing all of that and still being the caretaker of the characters and the tone and having it look like it does and just feeling kind of um, fresh and real, I, I think is really like uh, remarkable. And, and I can't imagine uh, why you speak to any of us anymore. <laughs> but uh, it, was really, it was really remarkable to watch and it was such a juggling act, but he did it really with a lot of grace. You can well, Good night. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, another thing that he, uh, we were going to have this kind of will they, won't they uh, relationship between Hugh and Rachel, and um, which none of us, I'm sure, knew how to write this love story that went on. But well, we just but, wouldn't have done it. Yeah, but Mike said, why don't you just have them just kind of rip the band aid off and just have them, they slept together, and now let's deal with it. And what you saw at the end of episode two um, is a huge storyline that gets woven through, which I think is a great It's story a line. huge storyline. <laughs> well, and the real, in real life, you and Rachel are married, and I thought it's it would be fun again. to see them fall in love again on camera, and they do, and the episode uh, is one thing, but the season is beautiful. Do you guys have them um, beyond just your friendships and stuff? We can that too. Yeah. Um, do you have like inspirations or anything beyond for the show that you were like, if we could do something that was like this or like we love this, like how can we make our own stamp on it or no? You mean like a like another show or a film or anything? Because I mean, like, I, I mean, I, I think the et the ethic that we had for the pilot was you know we don't Melissa and I never made a TV show before, so our idea was to make a little movie, and so that was our sort of what we thought, it's like, let's make a 22 minute movie. And then I think, you know, when Mike saw the pilot, he responded to the, you know, the wide shots that we would use, um, staying in a two shot longer than, you know, normally you would, because you've got these funny people that are improvisers. And then Mike um, actually took it farther. Like, you know, he, the scope that he's able to get, particularly later in the season is really amazing in the locations and the different things that he and uh, Sylvan were able to do, the director of photography. Um, it's really tremendous. So that that to me is exciting. So, so I wouldn't say that there was no show for me. It was just more like, well, I don't know how to make TV, so let's make a little movie. And the, and the goal, and Michael would have said, that if you, in the end, if you string them all together, that is that is our movie. And it all, it all kind of works together as one continuous story as opposed to just hitting different jokes, different time. It's like you really build the world and not just the episode. Right. And I, I know we have to wrap up, but I just, if, to put you guys on the spot, if you had to use one word to describe the rest of the episodes that people will see, what would you use? What word? Bleak. <laughs> Cringy. Cringe, good. I would say fluid. Oh, like sexually fluid. Strands. <laughs> fluid. I'm going to stick with fluid. Bleak is more appealing than fluid. Bleak is the worst answer you can get. Uh, it builds. Okay. I'm gonna change mine to it builds. <laughs> you can't do, there's no repeat. You can't do that. Uh, I think I would say it's, uh, it's pretty. Okay. I, I think I'd say romantic, because I don't think people expect it. Yeah. It really, it really is. Yeah, they're yeah. surprised. I like how it's like you have the, it's not just the romance between you and Rachel, but like the three of them. They're really, you guys seem to really love each other and I think that's really nice. So uh, first, let's give it up for- The surprise her. you see is at the end of the second episode when you realize, wait, what? That they're, that's just the first of many surprises yeah. that come. Okay, 
Okay, great. Well, the, t the show premieres March 29th on TV Land. It's up for an audience award, so please uh, fill out your forms and deposit them in the boxes outside. And let's give it up for the cast and crew. Of